<laughs> Some over here to Gareth, if that's all right. Some more. Hallelujah. You know, Brian Simmons says, there's nothing wrong with you that a kiss from God can't fix. And, you know, so I often just put my, my face up and I'll just have it. You know, one right here, God. Hallelujah. September, we have Brian Simmons is going to be with us and also Bobby Connor. Hallelujah. is going to be in the house. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, just some glorious things. We've also got uh, Sean Patrick Williams going to be coming soon in a few weeks. You will be remarkably blessed by this man. He carries the fire of God and just an amazing testimony uh, as he's been saved out of the occult and, and uh, just gloriously transformed and how the Holy Spirit has just grabbed a hold of him and seeing such a harvest. So I want to encourage you to make sure you come out uh, for that. And uh, so much that God is doing. We have got so many exciting things in store. I hope you can join us for our main service on Sundays at 4 o'clock this weekend. It's going to be glorious. It's going to be so good. We actually have, I'm going to be here, but we're going to have um, my mentor, uh, Pastor Jim Williams, is going to be ministering in the house on Sunday, which is just going to be so special. He's one of my favorite preachers, and uh, he, we're just, I, I feel like we're very honored to have him in the house, so that's going to be a real blessing here on Sunday at 4 o'clock. God is good. Father, we say thank you for your presence. It's just a delight to have you here tonight. We're going to just take up our tithes and offerings and just come to bless God. You know, the, the joy that we have in giving is something that's become becoming increasingly aware of, of the spiritual nature of what it is to really give. I honor my husband. You know, whenever he goes to a meeting, he always prepares before the meeting you know, something to give. He'll go to the bank, he'll have it in his top pocket ready to give because it's important to him that, that he comes and he brings an offering, that he comes to honor God with his giving. And, and uh, you know, I just want to honor you, church, for your generosity. Many of you tithe online, you give, your, uh, give online, very faithful, and we appreciate that. God is doing great things. Hallelujah. We're believing for air conditioning in this building. Hallelujah. Everybody said yes. Hallelujah. At the moment, it would be nice if it's reverse cycle. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's a little bit cold if you're visiting Brisbane. It is not always like this. A couple of weeks a year, we get really, really cold. But uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, when they're prophesying fire, I'm like, yes, bring it on, God. Hallelujah. <laughs> we'll have that in the house tonight. You might want to bunch up and get a little bit closer. <laughs> so good. So when you've got your, when you've got your uh, offering in your hand, and you want to come and bless God with that, would you just uh, stand with me, and we're going to just dedicate it to God. We're going to lift up our offering to Him, and just say, you know, because we're not just throwing something in the bucket. We want to worship God with our giving tonight. We want to honor Him. We want to bless Him. We're under no compulsion to give, but it's our privilege and our honor to be able to bless God, be able to worship Him, and be able to sow into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If anybody needs a credit card slip, just give us a wave. Uh, we'd be happy to get that one to you. So there's a couple here. If someone could just give them, they just keep your hands up. That'd be wonderful. I've seen God do remarkable things as, uh, as I just step out in obedience. And I tell you, we are in living in a supernatural uh, glory season. And uh, just obeying God, obedience brings blessing. It's just, it's true. I'm seeing it happen over and over and over again. Hallelujah. So let's just stand and worship God with our giving. Father, we lift it up to you today. Father, you are our provider and you are good to us. Father, thank you for this country that we live in. Lord, we say thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your kindness to us. Father, thank you, Lord, that we have a building here to meet in, that we can freely meet. Father, thank you for the blessings, God. Thank you for your goodness. Lord, I just want you to, to take a few minutes right now. Just begin to give thanks. Just begin to think of things that you can thank him for. Father, thank you that we have a bed to sleep in. Father, thank you for the mercy. Thank you, Lord, for the money to have bought the sound equipment. Thank you, Lord, for your great grace. Thank you for the way that you're providing for us exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask, hope, or imagine. Thank you for your kindness to us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for a place to live. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for transport. Thank you for your might. Lord, we bless you. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you, Lord, that we can live in a, a safe place. Lord, we bless you for that. Father, we say thank you. 
We lift up the authorities to you and those in, in, uh, in government. Father, we ask that you bless them. Lord, bless our country, Father, we ask in Jesus' name. Bless our nation. Father, we ask in Jesus' name. Give them wisdom. Give them grace. Give them strength. Give them help, Lord God. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Lord, we so, Father, enjoy, Lord, saying you have been good to us. We honor you. We bless you with our giving tonight. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. God bless you as you give. Hallelujah. Shalabufrehasa. Well, we want to get uh, the teams up in a little while, a little bit to, um, we're going to uh, just, I believe the Holy Spirit wants to speak to some people tonight and uh, we'll uh, just see how the Lord leads. Uh, but before we do that, I was just wanting to show you a little video clip that um, Nathaniel and the, the media team put together each week uh, on, they're calling it the normal Christian life. Hands up if you've never seen one of the normal Christian life videos. Okay, yeah, quite a few of you. It is, um, it's quite exciting because what they do is they just take a camera out on the street with them, uh, just doing normal life. And if you, if you want to ha- go online and have a look, you can look on the Facebook page uh, or on YouTube. If you're not on Facebook, you can just look up the normal one day in the normal Christian life, the normal Christian life. I can't remember what you're calling it now. Is that right? Someone help me. Help me, Joel. The normal Christian life. And... Um, You'll see God, just God moving with words of knowledge and miracles, hallelujah, and people being saved and set free and just astounded as God reveals the secrets of men's hearts, hallelujah. And it's so exciting. You know, signs and wonders and miracles are for the world to receive who God is, hallelujah. You know, when Jesus uh, turned the water into wine, it says the Bible says it was the beginning of the manifestation of his glory. And God manifests his glory in miracles, signs, and wonders. And, you know, a word of knowledge is a sign and a wonder to people when they say, how could you know that? And, uh, and, we, and they, they realize, wow, that God knows about me. He cares about me. And it's just so powerful. And God wants to catch the attention of his, his loved ones, the ones that don't yet know him, so that he can reveal himself as magnificent and glorious and the one who cares about them. So um, where are you, Nathaniel? You ready to go? They're all up there. Hooray. Ready, set, go. About the family at a soccer match. He saw a man named Ben who was limping. This is what happened. Knee ligament was damaged. So I went to the physio. They told me, um, Ben, sorry, you can't play soccer no more. You need like 5,000 to do operation on your knee. But at that time, I didn't have money. And I was on waiting list. I don't know for how long. So one day, I went to soccer training. My brother came. Watching my little um, JP playing soccer and the under under ten, nine match, and um, there was guy Ben over there. I saw this guy, tell me what's wrong with your leg. I told him I can't play soccer. Then I say, um, oh, well, I just believe you. Just to go out there and play for people. Well, the guy actually asked me, do you want to walk? Then I told him I didn't believe him first. Then I said, yeah, that would that would be great. He played for his knee and. Started feeling ready for pain from there straight away. The, the whole my knee, and I started feeling feeling good on my knee. And they told me, Ben, you're healed now. All you have to do is jump up and start running. I didn't believe it first, so I, I went like this. And there's no pain in my knee. So they told me to jump up. I did. They told me to run. And I did. And no pain there. After that, there was no pain. And I came back. They told me, now you're healing in Jesus' name. That when I'm believing God for real, that I can actually heal. And that's why I want to give my life to Him. All the glory goes to our God. It goes to Jesus. It's just amazing what He works through us. It is all people, but all the glory goes to Him and every little day. John's going to be in our normal Christian life for the first time for our next week. You've got to come. Have a look. John has had a big faith for eight months. I really got faith that he was really uh, in that battle. We haven't got a date for about, I'm saying, 28 years or something, but something in deep. We're getting quite a lot of great notice from the come in the name of Jesus. Have a look. Last week, the way we kind of journeyed back, then the extraordinary happened. We just came back and started journeying. Do you think you do that before?
hallelujah, that I wouldn't be as one who sleeps, but I'd be one walking in resurrection power, hallelujah, that I'd be walking in, in a, an awareness, fully aware, fully awake is what I keep saying, fully aware, fully awake is what I want to be spiritually. I'm finding even through the night, the Holy Spirit is speaking to me in dreams, and, and often it's intercessory uh, adventures, hallelujah, that he wants to take us on. That, that word that I had just before about a call to the wall, and, and I really feel was backed up um, as Nick shared, and Sarah, that there is a divine invitation to pray, hallelujah, and it's an invitation into intimacy, it's an invitation into uh, just some glorious adventures with God, and I really believe that if you will give yourself to looking, God's about to open your eyes to th see things that you've never seen before. And uh, I can feel the anointing actually in the room, even as I share about that. Um, I, I, where's my brother Eric? Are we going to pray for people later? But I just feel like the Holy Spirit is just sharing with me right now. Eric, uh, I saw you breaking open a, a flare. And I, I saw the flare going off. And it was a, a call for help and that many were going to come, that there was going to be a response to the call for help, uh, that the Lord is, it's like there's, a, there's supernatural help coming your way, and that God is sending people, uh, and He's sending supernatural help, even as the flare gets sent up, and that the Lord says that He's about to do something spectacular in your life. Uh, so He's so excited for you. So I, I just bless you. I said thank you for your mercy. We're going we're gonna to pray for people in uh, a little while, but... I've been getting quite a lot of, um, been getting a lot of emails, and uh, Dylan knows he <laughs> he's trying to sort through so much of the correspondence that we've been getting ever since um, the Sid Roth show, and that is actually going to be aired on the Discovery Channel in the middle of August as well, which is exciting. So if you could please pray for uh, that, you know I'm excited because it gives people who don't normally watch Christian television the opportunity to hear about God and his supernatural power and his great love for them. And I'd like to pray, I really would appreciate if you would pray with me that God will use that uh, as a, a way to uh, just invade people's homes with the light of the gospel, that many would be saved and healed and delivered, that people all over the world would, be, would see it, that God would draw them to it and that they would be saved. Will you, will you pray with me for that? Yeah. Hallelujah. So I'd really appreciate it. But I believe that God is um, really wanting to, to awaken us to opportunities. But a lot of people have been writing. We've been getting a lot of um, requests from people who, who, see, who say, well, I don't hear from God. I, 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 ha I feel like God is distant. I, I've given my life to God, but I feel more like a stepson than a, than a daughter or a son of God. And, you know, I, I, I've been surprised at how many people struggle to spend time alone with God, that they don't actually have a grid to know what to do. You know, I, I know I'm speaking to me, most of you here that have come out are just hungry for the presence of God. But, I, you know, even those that have walked with God for a long time, the strongest uh, attack in your life, I believe, that will consistently come will be against your private time alone with God privately and corporately. The Holy Spirit uh, strengthens us. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Hallelujah. They'll mount up on wings like eagles. That means they're going to see things from a perspective that's glorious. Uh, they'll run and not grow weary, walk and not faint. So the enemy's prime target is your entwining with God on a private level. And I remember over the years, you know, I, I've had times when I've really, you know, I, I love the Lord, but I've struggled sometimes uh, in spending time with God. I'd, I'd get up early, and I'm not really a morning person, but I'd get up really early, and I'd get down by my bed, and I'd start to pray, and I'd wake up, you know, 15 minutes later and realize, oh, you know, oh, I was trying to pray. Uh, anybody ever done that? Yeah, oh, yes, I know. Or, or I'd go and lie down to soak. fall asleep, not so good, uh, or, you know, I'd go to pray, okay, here I am to pray, and then I'd struggle as my mind wandered and, and so on, so I've, you know, over the years, my whole life message really 
has been uh, intimacy with God, but I believe it is a foundational thing that everybody, I, I believe, is, is needing to, to fix their focus on. Because if we can get this priority, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me today uh, from Revelation chapter 2. And we can have a quick look at that, if you like. Um, there's a lot going on in the earth right now. And it's, it's, a, it's an opportunity. If you would like to partner with God, the Holy Spirit would love to show you a whole lot of stuff. And, uh, and he's looking for watchmen who will stand on the wall, which is very, very exciting times. And uh, we need to be praying for Israel and praying for that whole region as well. Hallelujah. Did I hear an amen? amen. Yeah, hallelujah. That's good. It just makes me know that you're, you're listening. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 2. Takabuku rapasa. I know you're all scared because I said Revelation chapter 2. But it's all right. Don't be afraid. It's all good. There's actually some really good stuff in here. <laughs> it's a good book. Hallelujah. So let me. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's good. Jabapa, I'm looking for it. Ah, oh, where am I? I'm wanting to, is it, I think I'm looking in the right place. I wanted to talk to you about first love, and we're going to actually have a chat about it um, with, with, it, with the team tonight. Hallelujah. Jabapa. I'm sorry, I can't find it right here in front of me. But... He said, oh, you do all these good things. And he said, but I have this against you. You've left your first love. Yeah. And I was just meditating on that today and thinking, Lord, what does it really mean, first love? When I first became a Christian, I was just a young teenager. And I feel like my love for God right now is actually more mature than it was then. So are you wanting me to return to the, the, that, that level of love? And but as I really began to look into it and what the Lord was speaking about, that word first is actually, it actually means premier or, or most, uh, uh, first in our lives. And I really believe it's a challenge and an invitation from the Holy Spirit to really deliberately put Him first. If He is our first love, then He will be our first priority. That means that it's not just the emotion of when you first got saved. It is, it's actually having him deliberately put as our first priority. You can be doing a whole lot of good things, but the Lord's saying, hey, I don't want you just to be doing a whole lot of good things. I, I'm actually after your heart. The, what I've done it all for is so that you and I can be in communion. We can have fellowship. I want to be your first priority. He doesn't say that because he's egocentric or egotistical, but because this is what the whole of the uh, redemption, salvation story is about, that you and I could have relationship with God because by knowing him, we get to know his love for us. We get to understand who love is, and we get power then to love ourselves and to love one another. Hallelujah. We get to walk in a supernatural grace and a supernatural strength. And it's out of that place that we find wholeness, that we find life, that we find joy. In His presence is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. And we get to be refreshed. We get to be strengthened. But it requires us. It's going to, need, it's going to require us making Him our first priority. And that's something that you actually need some discipline for. Sometimes people hear the word discipline and they think, eh, sounds like works. No, it sounds like first. It sounds like first priority. If God is going to actually uh, call you back to first love, it's, a, it's going to require a fight. If you just think, oh, well, you'll, you'll coast through, I can tell you the enemy will set up, uh, he'll set up distractions continually uh, just to, to, to uh, take you away from the focus that God wants you to have. And he's not looking for you to feel condemned that you're not spending enough time with God. Sometimes I'll, I'll get to go to pray with God and I'll feel condemned that I didn't spend enough time yesterday and, and I'll spend half the time worrying about the fact that I didn't spend enough time. Anybody know what I'm talking about? 
And that's not what he's after either. The Lord's actually after your faith that says, Lord, I believe that every time I come to you, you are so happy to see me. Not because I'm egocentric or have this idea. I I have faith in the fact that Jesus now has cleansed me from all unrighteousness, that he has made me clean, and that the Lord says, the word of God says that he rejoices over me with singing. Hallelujah. That I can boldly come before the throne of grace. Hallelujah. And so I come in faith believing that even if I didn't spend enough time yesterday, uh, that when I come to him today, he's not looking at me and going, oh, look, well, yeah, take some time for you and I to warm up again. He's actually there going, oh, I'm so happy to see you. He runs toward us like the father of the prodigal son. Hallelujah. Every day he does that. And uh, he is just, that's because that's who he is. He is love. Hallelujah. So I just wanted to take some time tonight to have a little bit of a, just a personal discussion about what it looks like to have relationship with Jesus, what it looks like to actually intimately, privately spend time with God. So I'm going to invite Pastor Joel and Sarah and uh, Pastor Chris, where are you, Uh, just to come on up. And we got some couches set up, and I'm just going to... Just, we just want to have a little conversation about what it looks like. Because for so many people, they, they struggle. They, they, I remember even as a young child, I'd set aside the hour of power. I thought, right, I'm going I'm to do this. Right, I'm going to, anybody know what I'm talking about? Probably not. Okay, I'm showing my age. I was going to like, I'm going to try and do an hour. And I'd pray for five minutes and I'd run out of things to pray for. And then I feel like, I can't even pray with you five minutes. God, I'm so bad. You know, you can't even wait with me one hour. No, I can't. God, I want to. I don't even know what to do. So I want to just talk to you a little bit about some of the practical things about how we hear from God, how we interact with God. Because I believe that if we can get this right, if we can really get this established in our hearts and just refresh you and encourage you. Everybody has their own personal walk with God. But I really believe that the Spirit of God is inviting us into a new level of intimacy. Hallelujah. Thank so, yeah, yeah, hello, guys. We're going to have some time with Jesus. <laughs> it's all right. I'm um, quite happy. Okay. Hallelujah. So, um, I can't see you. Hello, everybody. Are you happy? If you're not, the Holy Spirit wants to help you. It's a wonderful thing. But I I actually just wanted to to bring these guys up here just to have a bit of a talk about what it looks like when when we take time, we set time aside to be alone with God. And that can be at any time. You know, it for me, if I do it first thing in the morning before I wake up, you know, I I often wake up and I say, this is the day that the Lord has made. And, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. But, uh, and then I'll just pray a few things as how whatever I've dreamt about. I'll, I'll just pray about that for a little bit. I'll talk to the Lord a bit. But then I get up and I have a cup of tea and I have some breakfast because I know me and I'll probably just drift back off to sleep. Not everybody is the same. I'm more of a night owl, but I, I like three meals a day and snacks. I like to spend time with God in the morning and lunchtime and afternoon and evening and snack on him during the day too and go for a walk in the afternoon. But we all will find our own time, our own set aside time with God. And I just wanted to, to take time just to uh, ask some of these guys just what it looks like when, when you, say Joel, when you take time, what, your daily walk with Jesus, your daily time, private time with God, what, is it, what does it look like? Excuse me. Um. You know, it's. I think it's. It's really changed um, from over the years, where I, I would. Um, I would probably be praying quite a lot in from about. Uh, I mean, when I was eight years old, I think there was a t- there was a period of time I, was, I actually prayed for about eight hours um, in a day per, for a few weeks, and uh, and, and so prayer. The, my prayer life has really been uh, being. I, I guess, especially in the formative years of my life, has been quite. Um, quite strong, but I think I actually came v- very much from a almost sort of a, a striving mentality. Like I put, this is the input that I am putting in for expecting some kind of a return or some kind of an output. 
And uh, to be honest, like even, you know, I'd be ministering, or this is sort of when I was about ni 18, 19, and I'd be ministering in um, my youth group. And I'd be praying, and I'd be laying hands on, laying hands on my head, and I'd get to lay in the spirit in my bedroom. And I don't know <laughs> if my, 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 my parents knew what was going on in there. There's this thing <laughs> on the floor. Um, but, I mean, it was awesome, and I think that God uh, really really honored the fact that I that I did put in that in the time but um, it really shifted when I was to when I became about 25 to 26 and it just became uh, I, I think it was, it was Sarah says this is discipline until it becomes a delight and it wasn't uh, I, I, w I would forget about what I it's so much about the request you know a lot of a lot of time it was about praying in tongues and in interceding and all that kind of stuff making requests um, but nowadays, I would say that the majority is just enjoying his presence. And um, one of the other things is I found that uh, uh, really when I went through, through this season, basically, oh, I could say just falling in love with Jesus. Uh, I would be spending many hours up in uh, Mount Cotton, and I'd just be walking along uh, the path and just enjoying his presence, just, just going over things with him. He, sometimes it wouldn't be revel revelation that would come for hours, but I'd just be, it would be fine. You know, in the past, it would be like, God, I have to seek you for a specific revelation. I have to, I have to get this or I have to get, get that. It was just, it's just, I, I just want to be with him. And, uh, but but now, nowadays, um, I, I would find in, in spending a lot of time, sometimes I would procrastinate if I didn't have a, like a couple hours that I could set out you know, to, to do that. And, um, and so I, I found that, um, you know, sometimes it's not just about duration. It's actually about frequency as well. And um, last year, we, we practiced this with the school is where every 10 minutes we would just stop and become aware of the presence of God. And, uh, you, know, you know, even if your, your schedules are jam-packed, you can stop at any point of the day and just say, God, I, I'm just going to become aware of your presence right now. And it only takes a couple moments to begin to become in tune with what God is doing. And so what we, we found is that, that as you, like every 10 minutes, we would stop what we were doing. We'd become aware of his presence. And the more that we would do it, it would get stronger and it would linger longer. And, uh, and, and, we found, and what I found is just by doing that intentionally for about two or three days with the school, it, it actually lasted to be like a whole entire, like two weeks where it was nonstop presence of God. I was just saturated with his, with his goodness, his kindness, at the most mundane times of the day where I normally wouldn't be so aware of his presence. And so uh, those are a couple of things that, um, yeah. Very good. What do you think, Sarah? Well, I guess like Joe, mine has shifted very much so from a place of, um, you know, working in the presence of God um, to just really enjoying and delighting in him and one thing um, that I find is I, I really, I quite enjoy fitness and I used to feel bad all the time for just wanting to go play and wanting to go run around until I realized he wanted to be the center and the circumference of every part of my world. And so now I find that I get the most revelation when I'm running, when I'm out in the park doing stretches and, and just speaking to him. And, and one thing that he's been um, teaching me recently is just, and I guess it's what Joel, Pastor Joel was just saying about um, becoming aware of his presence at any moment, is in a busy environment or busy area in the supermarket, just teaching me how to silence just everything else, all the voices, all the noise, and learn, Father, what are you saying right now? Mm, or what are you good. speaking yeah. right now? And I love, what I love about the Father is that he's always speaking. He always has something wonderful um, to say, and so we have this opportunity, um, you know, throughout the day to, to meet with him. And I, and I often find, it happened to me today, um, I'll go to the bathroom at work and I find I just take a moment with him and then I have to like, you know, I end up just laughing my head off for a couple of minutes and then I have to get myself back <laughs> together and go back to work, you know. And um, so there's these, I, I guess it's like Pastor Catherine talks about her snacks. It's like taking every opportunity throughout the day just to delight in Him and to know Him. And I do have that time um, of day, Pastor Catherine is saying, I mean, you know, she's more of a night owl. And what I, what I like to do is I feel like I make preparations for the day that's to come. And so I find that I have my sort of, what, when I try to grab a big chunk of time, is usually at night before bed in preparation for the day to come. And then when I wake up, I guess this is just really practical. Um, 
I try to take a moment and I, and I say this, God, I say yes today. Yeah. I say yes to whatever you want to do, whatever it looks like. I want to say yes to love and I want to say yes to laying down my life. And I, I want to serve you and serve your bride and serve people. And, and even just putting that as the focus of my day, um, that's about him, about knowing him, delighting in him. That always helps me um, connect with him throughout the rest of the day. Good. Very good. Testing. <laughs> I, uh, I find that um, I'm, I'm tired in the mornings, but there's not really a, a time in the day that I'm not actually that tired. I, um, <laughs> this is the I'm life tired of a quite a lot, faster. so I, um, <laughs> I, I like to have coffee before I pray just to, um, to wake me up. But even if I'm, even if I'm tired, it's like... And it's like it, that can be a um, that can be a deterrent, you know. It's like, oh, you know, maybe not right now or whatever. And um, we were just talking in the car on the way over about um, for a lot of people, you know, in the army, and and at the end of the the trail course, they've got a like a high rope thing that they need to get over. And a lot of people, you know, some can't do it, and they try and help each other. And uh, well, I feel like in the spirit that that kind of wall to get over is like at the start. And uh, and if if people can just get over that little bit in 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 the in the prayer life, there will be other obstacles, but everything else will be okay, right? And um and that first bit for some people, it's like, oh, you know, I can't hear God, or God doesn't talk to me, or what's the point? I'm giving up, you know. Um, but it's it's it it's it's not that bad. It can be done. And once you get over that, and once you get get ticking in in prayer. Um, then things are good, you know. You're walking with God like these guys so are talking you, how about. How do you break through? So this is what I do. So I'm, I might be tired if it's first thing in the morning or whenever. So I'll just pace so that if I'm resting and I don't feel the presence yet, then I'll go to sleep. So I walk around <laughs> and I just start um, saying, thank you, God. Praise your name, God. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, Father. Because in his presence... Uh, when we worship him, God inhabits the praises of his people. So God's going to come when I start praising him. So thank you, Lord. Praise your name, God. Praise your name, Jesus. And then I'll be praying in tongues. If I'm really tired. But eventually I'll get there, right? So praise your name, God. Praise your name. But So I'll do that because the Bible says if we're praying in the Spirit, uh, we're building ourselves up, right? So God's coming and we're building ourselves up. And we're, we're setting aside some time that we can focus on God, right? So all this is about God. It's all about getting closer to Him. So if we're focusing on Him and we're drawing near to Him, the Bible says what? He'll draw near to us. Yeah. So, oh God, I haven't felt your presence and oh, everything's not right. And uh, Well, thank you, Lord. Praise your name, God. Yeah. Praise your name, Jesus. After maybe 10, 15 minutes, you start feeling a little shift in the spirit, right? So when you start feeling that, that's good. That's the presence of God. So that's what you want. So I like having fun and I love the presence of God. Like Just like these guys, just like everyone at this church, we all want the presence of God and that's what's fun and that's what we want. But, but, um, but sometimes it can be hard. So how I break through is I do that for like 10, 15, 20 minutes or whatever until, okay, now I'm starting to feel the presence of God and I'm enjoying it. Maybe put a worship song on, but now it's fun. And so now I'm praying and I can keep going along that track if, if I want to, keep praying in tongues, go deeper, deeper, or, um, or just start talking to him, you know, and, and I feel the presence. Maybe he'll... He'll show you somebody and you start praying for them or start praying for whatever and, and thanking him for everything. I always yeah. like to thank him because, because he's just, he's, everything's already done, you know? Like, and so I just thank him. I know he knows all my needs before I even say it. So if he knows it and he's a good God, I know he wants to help out. And so I just always thank him. Thank you, Lord, for you. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in the church and the miracles and, and things like that. So that's how I come, I, I break through. And also recently, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not that I've attained, but I work towards the goal. And um, I felt like God gave me a good, um, a good loving uh, clip around the ear hole the last couple of weeks. Like, hey, get back into it. Get in the spirit. Get praying. Get, get, um, get activated, you know. And, um, 
and become a spiritual giant in me and, and recognize, you know, wake up and realize, you know, uh, who we are and what we have in him. And yeah. so I'm like, oh, God, I'm sorry. Okay, that's right. Spirit, giant, you, you know. And, um, <laughs> and, um, and so, yeah, and, uh, and, and so recently I've been, you know, just making sure I'm, I'm like, you know, uh, someone was like 10, 10 minutes late and also, um, so I was like, okay, well, let me talk to some people about Jesus. And, uh, and even that will start to open up or activate or pry open his presence, his love, just by starting to talk to people. Because you're talking to somebody and they're saying, hey, I just want to tell you God loves you. And for a second, if they actually start to want to wanna listen and say, okay, yeah, and you're telling them about how much God loves them, you're feeling the presence of God for them. Holy Spirit's like, ooh, I'll jump in, I'll jump in on this. And so that's another way that you can kind of break through and break into his presence and, and, and realize and focus on him. But yeah. Very good. So I'd, I'd love to hear um, a little bit more to how do you incorporate like reading the word of God? I mean, I- in terms of like if someone here, they've got a working day and they've got half an hour they set aside in the morning, you know, um, how would you... How, Joel, how, how would you incorporate the word of God? How, do you, how, do you, um, how would you encourage them if you were discipling someone like that? <laughs> I'm just throwing, I'm throwing it out there, you know, that if someone's, you know, they're starting early in the morning and, and they're off and they've, they've set aside half an hour, what would you, what do you sure. encourage them so to do? So with half an hour, yeah, I would, I would encourage, um, um, I, I guess you just got to s- sort of see what, what works for you better. Some people... I know can get into the presence um, quicker through the word, or um, or through music, or through worship, or something or other like that. I would choose the thing that uh, that you get into the presence of God the quickest, the quickest avenue to get right in there. Yeah. And uh, and so, you know, if if you only have a short amount of time to be able to to read the read the word, I would encourage a you know a proverb and a psalm and something from the New Testament. Uh, if you don't, if or you can have a full on um, Bible reading plan. I've I've done um, I've done a couple different Bible reading plans from front frontwards uh, front to back. Uh, there's another w- really interesting one which is called a, a chronic chronological uh, reading plan, which actually is is like basically you know starts with the book of um, Genesis and then Job, uh, and then it's just it's in chronological order, so it's really interesting. Um, I, f- I find it's it's good to um, I listen to a lot to the audio Bible. Who listens to the audio mm. Bible? It's, uh, you can get free apps now um, on your phones if you've got a smartphone. or there, There's lots of different ways you can actually listen to the Word of God. And I find that I can actually get a lot more in, uh, as well as, you know, I like to study it. Uh, you know, I study it with Tom at night time. We, we read as a family devotions in the morning, but, and I read privately. But then I get to listen to whole books and things just while I'm making the bed, doing my hair, getting ready, um, whatever I'm doing, you know, in the kitchen or wherever I am. If I, if I put the audio Bible on and I'm just constant, consciously uh, taking time to allow the Word of God to really wash over me, uh, I find that you know, there's lots and lots of ways that we can do that. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And uh, it's just, I, I like to not waste any of my time. I actually like to steward my time as well as I can. Um, and one of those ways is that if I'm doing something, I, I like to put the Word of God on so that I can listen and, and just have it, have it in like that. So. Mm. Yeah, so I, I mean, I guess I'm maybe, maybe reluctant to give a formula, but if, if you were to break it yeah. up, I would say, say maybe five, five minutes speaking in tongues, ten minutes in worship, um, ten minutes in the Word, and five minutes making requests. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, yeah, 30 yeah. minutes, something like that. Good. And then, you know, I say half an hour because once you start down that road and you start to do it, you'll actually begin to understand what a delight and a joy it is, and you'll begin to get a taste for it. And you, you get your time alone with God at lunchtime, you know, or you might, you might just go, oh, I just would love to read some more of this book, or I'd, I'd love, you know, this... Uh, I'm reading this, this story in the Bible right now, or uh, take some more time just to, to pray in tongues. I find that actually after 15, about 10, 15 minutes, often, you know, the Bible says that when we're praying in the Spirit, the Spirit of God is interceding through us for us. And He's praying about stuff that you may not be aware of spiritually. And there, is, there are spiritual forces at, at work. 
And as we begin to pray in the Spirit of God, we're praying in the Spirit. I, oftentimes, uh, heaviness, tiredness, um, the frustration that I feel like I'm not really hearing at the moment, that will dissipate often after about 10, 15 minutes just praying in the Spirit. Mm. Because as I'm praying in the Spirit, I'm also praying with my mind, believing in faith that what I'm doing as I'm praying in the Spirit, the Spirit of God is actually interceding for me. And by faith, I'm really believing. It's not just a, a rote thing that I'm doing. I'm actually activating my faith while I pray in, the, pray in tongues, that what I'm doing right now is there is glorious spiritual warfare going on. There is things being set up, divine setups are being uh, put in place, like bricks in the road are being put out as I pray in tongues, as the Lord is actually setting things up for me, praying through me perfect prayers. Mm. And I engage my faith with my tongues, uh, with the tongues as the Holy Spirit uh, prays through me. I'm engaging my faith, believing, and often looking to see uh, what he is, what, what's going on. And then after 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes normally, praying out loud in the Spirit, I've got my spirit so full of things to actually pray, pray about because the Holy Spirit's been showing me and I've been interpreting internally what the Spirit of God's been, uh, got his focus on and I just come into agreement with that and begin to, to, to pray. So. Yeah, I think with the Word as well, Pastor Joel said it's not just about time um, but the frequency in prayer as in like you can, have, you can pray through a list for two hours or you can have 10 minutes in the presence. Which one's going to be impacting more on your spirit? So I think the same with the Word is like you could probably gloss over, you know, uh, read five chapters a day and just smash the Bible. But if you, it's about how much that Word becomes you, yeah. how much you're impacted off that, that yeah. Word. And Clark Taylor used to say, information combined with meditation turns into revelation. That if you, if you even just have one verse, and I know Nathaniel's really good with this, Take one verse and go, whoa, there's something in that, and just chew on that all day. If, you've, if you're on the fly, one verse, and you keep going over that all day, praying over that all day, and see what that yeah, does. Yeah, it's know? true. Or even like if one of those verses comes up, sometimes I'll even wake up with a song, uh, a scripture in song, and, uh, or God will be speaking to me about a particular scripture or highlight something, and I'll read it in lots of different versions and just begin to talk about it with people during the day and, and start to realize this is a divine invitation into deeper revelation. And uh, so I think that's really important to learn how to respond to that. Go, Sarah. I was just going to say, as someone who gets up and goes to work in the morning, um, you don't often get much time. And so, so I guess this is going back to Pastor Catherine's question. Um, what I like to do is, as soon as I get up, turn on worship music. And so I, straight away, I'm just investing um, in the presence, getting into the presence, enjoying him. And um, often, like Pastor Catherine, I'll wake up with a scripture or a song. Or what I love about the Passion Translation is that, that you can open up the Proverbs and like get in two verses in and just be like, wow, and, and take that as your verse for the day, you know. Or, or this morning I, I wake up with, it's for freedom that Christ set you free. And so just meditating on what does that freedom mean for me, you know, was so I could be free. And, um, and then on my way to work, I'll turn on the audio Bible. And so it's just sort of taking that opportunity yeah. um, as you're moving out to just that preparation, getting ready for the day, if you're actually physically getting ready, but also... Um, that readiness in your spirit just to be attentive, but getting in his presence, I find. Yeah, uh, and that, those, that. those little highlighted words too, often good just to journal, just to write down. Sometimes the idea of journaling to busy people can seem like a daunting task. But if you actually say you just got that one word for the day, just, just jot it down, have a, have a uh, journal beside you. And I also uh, try to make sure when I wake up too that I'm paying attention to, to what dreams I've had. Uh, in our household, we're always waking up, what did you dream about, what did you dream about? And because our, often our dreams are divine invitations for intercession, they're divine invitations for us to respond to and or, uh, allow the Holy Spirit, but that's a, a subject for another day. I'd like to just talk a little bit more actually uh, about what it is actually to uh, commune with God through the Word of God. I know Pastor Gareth actually uh, 
loves to talk about that. Uh, so we might might get you. You can come and, and sit on a sit on a corner of a couch if you want to, G. Um, but you know, I find that I actually um, I love to pray the Word of God. I like to pray into it, and I, you know, the Word of God is not just for our information, so that we become puffed up and think, well, I know that scripture, rah rah rah. Uh, but actually, so that we can allow the Word of God to really um, do the work that it's intended to do in our lives. So I, will, I love to pray into the Bible. I love to pray the apostolic prayers. I've written them out. I wrote them out for myself. Just going through the Bible and anything that I could pray. So Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3, Colossians, Philippians. I mean, the Lord's Prayer, the Prayer of Jabez. I, I just, I love to write them all out, personalize them. And if I'm feeling a bit tired, I'll often open it up and just begin to pray it out, begin to pray out the Word of God. Or if I'm, whatever I'm reading for that day, just begin to pick it up and pray into it. Or um, sometimes, because the Bible says that the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. So sometimes I'll actually get the Word of God and I'll read it to Him. And I'll talk to Him. I'll, be re- I'll read it out loud to Him. And I'll, I'll ask Him questions. And, and just be aware of the fact that the person of the Holy Spirit is actually in the room with me right now. And I'll talk to him, Lord, what do you mean by that? And expect that he's going to answer me. Because, you know, he's not, he's not an idea. He's a person of the Holy Spirit. He's actually here. And he wants to walk and talk with us. He wants to help us. He wants to teach us. And uh, so I'll ask him, Lord, tell me about this. Talk to me about that. And then I'll pray into it. And I'll pray that back to him. And uh, so I find that that's, that's another way for it really to stick. So often my preaching comes out of the, the, prayer, the word of God that I've been praying into that week or things that he's been uh, speaking to. Tell us about, you know, you, you, you're a teacher. You love, uh, you love the word of God. Tell me about your personal uh, walk with God when it comes to reading the word. Mm, absolutely. It's a delight. Um, so much of it to delve into. Uh, I think some of the things I've learned is that God seems to be a seasonal God. You know, He doesn't change, but we see in the earth that there are seasons and there's times and cycles of things. And uh, what makes the word powerful is there's always something. There's always some situation it's going to speak brilliantly to. You know, even if you're just new to the to the word, you crack it open. There's going to be something there amazing for you. And what makes it so unique is that there'll be a verse uh, or somebody's prophesied a verse or a scripture or something that'll be, we talk about the rhema word. It's often when like a, uh, the, the logos of scripture becomes specific to you. You know, it almost like it leaps off the page. I'm sure you've all had those moments where it just becomes extremely pertinent to you right there in that moment. And it's important to take note of those, you know, because often when God's bringing you into a season, he's going to bring a promise and a scripture with you to walk you into the season yeah, and walk you through that season. And that's what makes it so powerful and personal as well. You may have heard, you know, often I've heard a scripture a hundred times, but I heard it on that day and it became something entirely uh, amazing to me. And I walked through that and I felt uh, on Tuesday night, I felt God say, there's these two things that he's always trying to do. And similarly, it's two things the enemy is always trying to disengage. One is to know that God is awesome. You know, not just loosely, but in, a gener- in an amazing sense that He's awesome and he's, he's powerful and He's faithful and He does slay giants. He does move mountains. And the second is that we are loved. And it's like the enemy is always trying to undo those things. He's always trying to cripple your faith, your belief, your tenacity in God, and He's always trying to question, are you yeah. really a son? Are you really a daughter? And so much of these amazing scriptures about that, often I'll... Um, you know, what Pastor Catherine often talks about, I said, you know, go to God and say, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And he's like, I just love you. I just think, still think the world of you, you know. Uh, we're still going to move mountains together. Uh, because he knows that. That's a really good question to ask, actually. <laughs> that's, just, that's just the equivalent of putting your cheek up to God and saying right here. <laughs> because and he looks at you, he adores you. He is so in love with you. He doesn't look at you and tolerate you. He looks at you, and, and, and you are the prize that he let his body be beaten and, and crucified for. He looks at you and loves you more than life. He doesn't judge you. He didn't come into the world to judge the world, to condemn the world, but to save the world. And when you look to him in faith, believing that he, he is for you, that he has forgiven you, <gasps> faith pleases him, and he is just like, ah! Anyway, I get pretty happy about that. <laughs> Last time I was praying, I was like, God, show me how much you really love me. Two minutes later, some guy gave me a thousand bucks. 
I was like, okay, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> yeah. gonna be praying that prayer tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, the, the other thing I think that is um, something that is very powerful is when we, we start, when we learn to how to, to study the Word of God and to pray together, um, we love to have family devotions. When I was growing up, I, you know, occasionally my mum and dad would try and have a family devotion and I hated it. It was just like, this is so awkward and it was difficult and, you know, it was just, rah, I didn't like it at all. Um, but, you know, we've actually, I've learned uh, that it's really important, with, especially with kids and with family. Uh, uh, Tom and I, we like to read the Bible at nighttime together before we go to sleep, so that it's the last thing that we have in our heads before we go to sleep. Uh, you know, Tom will often read to, he'll read to me at nighttime, and we'll, we'll be going through something. At the moment, we're going through Psalm 119 together. Um, so we, we've got that going on. But in the morning, um, we like at breakfast time to, to gather the family around and just to let each one of the kids and, and us, we all just read a little passage from the Bible. We, they can choose whatever they want to read. Joseph happens to know all the shortest Psalms. Um, <laughs> but he's progressed from that now. And, and he'll just, he'll pick something. He, lo- he, he really likes the words in red. He loves Revelation and the Gospels. And, and, um, and I find it's quite amazing how God will speak. Sometimes we'll all read the same thing and we'll just carry on from where we started or they'll all pick something differently, hear prophetically where to read for the day. But we do it in such a way that we have some really yummy food so, and so that it's, it, we try to make it fun, that it's an enjoyable time. This is like, oh, you know, we're, it's, it's morning, we've got some nice, nice food happening and, and we'll, we'll uh, read the Bible together, we'll pray together. Sometimes we'll put the music on and, and worship together. But, you know, I feel that I mean, we certainly haven't, uh, haven't got it, a, a template that I want everyone to follow. But I feel that if we just make it a priority, this, this whole thing is about first love, making God priority. I want him to be our family's first love. I want him to be my life's first love. And, and I can do that by prioritizing in my life. And just things that seem really simple. You don't have to have mammoth um, you know, things. You don't have to bite off more than you can chew. But I, I believe as you deliberately say, God, I'm bringing, just like we did with our offering tonight, I'm, I'm setting this aside for you. This is, I'm prioritizing. This is, I want to worship you as my first love, as my priority. You know, I am um, you know, Joel, tell me a little bit about uh, your, your family. I love, I love when I get to spend time with your family and you know, family devotions. It's always glorious. Tell us a little bit about, about, A, what you and Candace do together when it comes to reading the Word and praying. And Eliana. <laughs> and, um, and, and your, your family when you were Candace growing up. Candace has just got some brand new baby books that she's been reading. <laughs> Eliana, <laughs> so she's starting her out. Um, yeah, starting her young. Um, I can identify with what you were saying. Um, there were some stages where it, was, it could be a little bit uh, awkward. But I like the idea of prayer and feasting. That, that yeah, sounds like prayer and feasting works well for my family. <laughs> <laughs> we love food. We do um, that for staff yeah. meetings too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, uh, I, family, what do we call it? Family altar was what uh, we called, called it for our family time. And, um, and so, you know, dad would... Dad would play uh, guitar and he would sing. We we'd, we'd worship together and then um, and then he we would read a scripture and uh, somebody would share about it and thing. I think sometimes Mum would read uh, some revival books and everything like that. And uh, yeah, it was it was really it was really awesome that really began to to lay that foundation uh, for me as a as a young kid. And I think that uh, Mum recalls a time where um, we were we were keen to kind of get in and out of of family family altar. Actually, it was. <laughs> um, you know, for a period of time, I was like, oh, we, we want to go and play again, but, you know, we have to do family altar. But um, I think w- one of the times there was really what we called a family revival where, where the Spirit of God just, just, um, just exploded and we were just, we just wanted to tell everybody el- around our neighborhood about Jesus and everything like that. So it was really a, a platform for us uh, to, to be able to do that. And I think they, they remember the contrast of where we kind of wanted a family altar to finish um, to 
one time when <laughs> when dad uh, we you know we did a little bit of worship and and uh, they started started getting into the, the Bible and that my apparently my comment as an eight or nine year old is doesn't this family believe in worship anymore? <laughs> 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 I, I get really, I get a lot of joy out of hearing the kids pray, actually, and um, it's surprising. As they begin to learn uh, how to pray out loud, it then equips them to pray for people um, as a natural, normal thing and, and become comfortable with praying out loud. That's what we love to do on our Sundays with our communion groups, just encouraging everybody to learn how to pray so that it becomes a normal part of Christian life, learning how to pray out loud. Um, so actually, what I wanted to do, just before we wind this up, and then we're going to pray for some people here tonight. Um, Dylan, do you want to run the mic around for me? I'm going to let you ask a couple of questions. And you can ask some questions, whatever you like, pertaining to first love, pertaining to time alone with God, pertaining to reading the Word, um, questions that you'd like to ask, ask us. I, we're happy to. Yeah, I just want to say this, that, um, that there is no quick fix that um, we've gotten so comfortable. I was thinking the other day that I live probably now in this modern world better than most kings of old have ever lived in terms of their comfortability, you know. I want a Coke and a burger in my hand. They're there right now, you know. And, uh, and so it's, it's really, we've gotten accustomed to get it now, um, self-gratification, instant gratification, and, um, and no longer... Um, about, you know, the, the discipline of the, the sowing, seed time, harvest, pouring in, putting it in. And, um, and uh, if, you're, if you have a strong prayer life and you're strong in the word, the devil will not be able to kick the tar out of you. But if, you've, if you're going through it, and, and I'm just being honest here, and you think, man, I, you know, I, wanna, I must need a prophetic word or I must have to go get a, there needs to just be a good conference just to get me back, you know, or, or you know, um, or you're, 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 um, you're leaning on, and these meetings are awesome. I love Friday nights, Sundays, getting in the presence and it refreshes. But if, if, you're, if you're surviving on that to sustain you, that will not do, and the devil will get in, you know. And as I said, a couple of weeks ago, God had to clip me around the ear and wake me up a bit. Well, it's true. And it's, it's a lot like um, David when it says at the time when the kings go out to war, uh, David was actually quite comfortable. He was back at the palace. And sometimes when things are going well, and you can get, you can get very comfortable with your own little palace, your own little world. Um, and, and that's the opportunity that you can give the enemy grounds to start to bring in temptation if you actually are not prioritizing first love presence of god first love you actually are opening yourself up for suggestions that'll come and and the enemy has has uh, many suggestions he'd like to bring to to take your focus to take it and distract you mm. uh, so i believe it's really vital that we actually are deliberate to prioritize to have uh, Christ is our first love. Amen. Yeah, so, yeah. do we have um, some questions? Oh, sorry, I interrupted. Did you have anything? Yeah, else? Right. I'll, I, yeah I was just going to say, you know, like, um, I was just aware, made aware, as soon as I started getting right back into it, of a couple of assignments, and I was able to go, oh, is that what that was? Flick, flick, and get back focused on God. And um, my dad always used to say, the Bible will keep you from sin, and sin will keep you from the Bible, so you've got to make a choice, son, you know. I was like, okay, yeah. But, um, so, yeah, just it's amazing. But there's no quick fix, and prayer is good and gets you strong. All right. Good, good stuff. All right, questions. You have to put your hand up, and, uh, and Dylan will run a, run a um, microphone to you. Has anyone got any questions just in terms of relating to uh, talking with God, hearing his voice, and um, reading the Bible? Has anyone got a question? Don't be shy. It always takes one to sort of break oh, Okay, it. there's one up there. There we go. Hannah's got a question for you. <laughs> Hannah's, Hannah's got a question. Um, I just wanted to know when God speaks to you, do you have no doubt that it's him? Because when I, like, if I feel like he's speaking to me, sometimes I'm like, oh, is that my voice or is that his? Like, yeah, I just want to know that. Good, that's a good answer. A good question. Does anyone want to respond to that one? 
Yeah, go ahead. Well, a couple of things for me. Firstly, um, the Bible says that we have the mind of Christ. And so often when I'm asking or I'm seeking direction or asking God, what are you saying? And I have a thought come to my mind. I can trust that my thoughts are no longer my own. The thoughts I have are no longer my, uh, my own, but have been um, submitted to Jesus. And so often I find that I go, yes, that's God. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm not really making sense. Yes, I am. Um, <laughs> that I have the mind of Christ, but also that does this line up with the character of God? Does this line up with who he is? Because if it's not encouraging, if it's um, not, if it doesn't line up with the word of God, it, I, it's, it's pretty easy to know, okay, well, that's not God. I'm hearing wrong. And I also think as well, um, and it's one thing Jesse has taught me, is that Jesus is peace. The uh, Holy Spirit is peace personified. And so if the answer that you get doesn't lead to peace, it's not from the Holy Spirit, I believe. But if you, if the words you get, your spirit like recognizes it and goes, yes, I, I feel that peace. I feel that comfort. That's how I, t- that's how I identify that I'm yeah, hearing. very good. And I will say a lot of two, two, hello. I will say, can you turn this up, the white one? <laughs> Hello, two, two, two. Sorry. Um, a lot of the time, like if you're praying, okay, God, should I take the job into Toowoomba or should I uh, take the promotion here? You know, and you're going, okay, God, give me an answer. I want to know. Um, uh, and you're, you're praying and you're waiting on God in the spirit. You know, you feel the presence. And then, and then you, you go, you hear like Toowoomba. And then you're like, okay. And you're like, stay here, take the promotion. And you're like, okay. And then you're like, now you're confused because you're like, ah, I'm just hearing all these different <laughs> thoughts. A lot of the time and usually it's the, the first thought. Like maybe if you're in the spirit, you're waiting on God, usually it's the first thing that comes and then the devil will come in and try and confuse you and mess, mess you up, you know. And, uh, and I love what Sarah says about and, 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 and Jesse about the peace, you know. So if you think, yeah. okay, move to Toowoomba and then you go, okay, that may feel uncomfortable, but there's a peace about it. There's just a rest on thinking when I move to Toowoomba. And I think about take the promotion here, I feel like, oh, it just I d- doesn't feel right, you know? And so that's another indication following the, that peace um, that you hear mm. from God. No, I think, um, you know, the Holy Spirit, He does want to help us. Sometimes we ask questions too that we don't get an answer for, but He'll say something else. Uh, and that's, that's okay too. You know, you might be saying, Lord... You know, who am I going to marry or what are you going, what's this going to, what, and, and he doesn't, he, he may not necessarily come through with a name or a picture and that could actually be to your benefit <laughs> because often, you know, there's things that it's not time for you to know, but he'll speak something, he'll speak a word of encouragement and God wants you to have faith that he will answer you whenever you call to him. He'll have something to say. It may not necessarily be exactly what you want to hear. But he will have something to say. And uh, so I, I love to walk and talk with God. I actually, I ask him my questions out loud. I talk with him. I tell him what I'm thinking. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned about this. I'm feeling this, Lord. Help me. What do you think about this? And I'll, I'll look with an expectation to hear the Holy Spirit speak to me. Sometimes I'll ask for chapter. I'll look and I'll expect chapter and verse as well for the Lord to, to lead me where to read. Uh, and to help me, he often speaks to me that way as well. Uh, so it's, it's a journey and a joy, but we have this joy of interacting with God and we can hear the voice of God. Uh, but I also think that there's wisdom in the multitude of counselors, that if you're feeling God say something, it's a good thing to talk to somebody else uh, that you trust uh, it, uh, about that because you know, God's not a big dictator up in the sky. I had some people come to me once and they said, God told me I had to do this and then he told me I had to do this and he told me I had to do this and, it was, and they, they ended up sleeping in their car because you know, God <laughs> said, don't go home, God said this. And I, when, I, when they told me everything that God, God was saying, I said, this doesn't sound like God to me. You know, what you're, what you're hearing is a fearful voice that's trying to control you and say, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, you must do this, you must do that, you've got to do this now. And it was actually, I believe, a familiar spirit that they were listening to, that, or a religious spirit 
that was uh, trying to dictate to them. And, and God's not like that. He is in relationship with us. Hallelujah. And uh, you hear his voice. He's, he can be strong sometimes, but you feel it's like a warmth in my heart. Even when he's correcting me, even when he's uh, speaking sp- strongly to me, my heart is warmed with joy because I feel safe. I feel so safe when he speaks to me because uh, I know that he's for me. I love how you said like, he, he's always going to say something. Like I had a, a couple of years ago, I had a good friend, and I said, I was talking about questions I had in the Bible, creation, Satan, these things, and I said, oh, but we'll never find that out, you know. And then he was like, well, why can't you just ask God? And I was like, yeah, but he's not going to say, you know, this is why I've done this and this, and like that'll just be when I get to heaven. And he got so offended at me just assuming that God's just going to stay silent and not say <laughs> anything. And he's like, we do not serve a stone statue God that just doesn't say anything. That's you right. talk to him. You can ask him anything, and he, will t- he talks. He's a talking God. That's the difference we have about our God and every other God is that our God wants relationship and talks back. And I was like, and so we go, and I was like, wow, God. And it just shifted my mindset that I think, okay, God doesn't just stay silent and just not say anything, you know, he talks, and, and uh, Clark Taylor used to say, God's always speaking, we're not always listening, and so sometimes I want to, I think, okay, God, let me try and tune my ears to hear, or let me quieten myself, and, uh, and stop blabbering at you, and maybe let's, I'll try and listen, or whatever, but, uh, but he'll always say something, which I think is good. Um, I was just going to say, uh, also, perhaps a couple um, goalposts, if you will, um, you know, I, I love what Bill Johnson says. He says, you know, when you, when you pray, whatever you desire in your heart, that it, sh- that it shall be done. And many times people can have, say, hey, look, I'm desiring this or I'm desiring that or I'm desiring this woman or this car or something or other like that, and they'll go to pray about it. He says it's very important to be aware of what your desires are in the presence of God. And, uh, you know, th- this, the, the whole thing is we are led by peace. But I've also seen it on the other hand where people could, be, could use that in the con- context for one thing is, for instance, you know, I've heard people that are like, oh, you know, we're, we're committing adultery or whatever, but I felt a peace on it. Oh. <laughs> you, and it just good. doesn't line up with the Word of God. That's what you call yeah. a seared conscience because your yeah. conscience has been violated so many times that you don't feel anything anymore. And so people can interpret the, as, that as a peace. On the other hand, is God maybe leading you to do something pretty outrageous? And uh, you, because, you know, let's say there's, this, there's somebody out there on the street that, that uh, you're feeling a tug in your spirit to go and your heart's beating a million times a, a per minute, then that doesn't necessarily mean just because your heart is beating at accelerated ways, oh, I'm not a feeling at a peace in it. Because there is, if there's a peace and a joy. And, and, you know, I mean, the other thing is just, you know, Jesus, if... Jesus could have easily, when he was at, at Gethsemane, said, hey, look, Father, I don't feel a peace in this whole cross deal. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So I just think you have to be very careful with that one. Um, and, uh, and also, uh, there's a YouTube video out there. You should check it out. It's called Playing the God Card. Uh, I think we need to be very careful <laughs> is uh, when, we, when we say, we, we, the fact is, if, somebody, if you say, God has spoken me to do this, uh, especially when coming to leadership. You can't, we can't argue with that. We, we can't give any other advice any other ways. Who are we to argue with God? But we understand that we're all in process. I don't think anybody here would, would say that we were, we're at a place of hearing 100%. We're still, we're tuning in and we're hearing, the, we're, we're learning how to distinguish the Word of God. Uh, and, uh, you know, especially with relationships. Relationships are the hardest things to hear God from because it's like, Am I supposed to marry him? I'm not. Am I supposed to marry him? <laughs> I see his face. You know, I feel a real peace about it. You know? <laughs> I've seen that. Go, you know, to be, be honest, there's been several girls that God spoke to that I was the one. And uh, <laughs> so <laughs> himself up now. Yeah, sure. Several <laughs> girls have felt <laughs> from the Lord. And you have probably more for Chris. So. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> but, yeah. Paul, <laughs> I think poor God has been probably blamed for a lot of b- broken male and female relationships. Poor boys, I apologize um, for God being blamed. Poor God. Anyway, 
Um, Hannah, getting back to your question, you asked, <laughs> how do you know if God's speaking? How do you know if it's God? And I just wanted to encourage you that um, the more you talk to someone, the more you get to know their voice. And so when Jesse calls my name or calls me and I answer, I don't need to know that he rang to know that it's him. And so I just want to encourage you to keep talking to God. It doesn't have to be necessarily about decisions. Do I need to do this? Do I need to do that? Just familiarize yourself with him and let him speak to you. Have a conversation with him day to day, and um, you'll find that you'll get to know what he sounds like. And that's what I do. I hear something and I go, no, that doesn't sound like his voice to me. That's, do- that's not what he sounds like. And so that's another Very way good. that you can distinguish um, whether you're hearing from him or not and trust that he will speak yeah, to you. Yeah, that's very well said. I, th- I think, too, it's also important that we recognize that spending time with God, you know, my first priority when I spend time with God is not always to try and get answers. My, my first priority is to love him well and to be loved. And if I can, if I can have that time... <sighs> you know, sometimes it'll take, if there's things on my mind, lifting them up to the Lord, casting my cares on Him, talking about the things that are on my prayer, but on my, on my heart with Him. And He wants to hear about those things. But it is very important, I believe, that uh, after you've taken time to talk about all the things that you need to talk about, to bring your anxious thoughts to Him and let His peace come and uh, fill your heart, let Him uh, bring you to a place where you can give thanks, knowing that he's heard you and uh, it's, it's so important then to not finish there but to take time to let him just love you to let him enjoy you to be enjoyed by God and to enjoy him to love him because that's the place that you become strengthened you know if I only had relationship with Tom in a way that we we just talked about the business of the day and things that needed to be done and this has to happen and this has to be done and that has to be paid and this to, you know if that's all I did uh, our relationship would be quite shallow. But we, you have to talk about that stuff. Those things need to be dealt with. There's lots of stuff, the business of the day, that has to go on. But there has to be time where we just enjoy each other, just enjoy each other's company. And God wants that with us every day, time that we can just enjoy him. We're going to take another question. Hey. Hello. 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 Hey, I'm on. Um, so I've heard this story of like a school teacher who was a Christian who would go into his classroom and every morning before the class would come in, he would just pray over the classroom and he would just declare, you know, uh, this, is, this is God's classroom and we just declare the kingdom in here. And the story goes on that um, he would actually experience uh, such a presence in that room that like students walking past would feel it and go, oh, what's, what's going on in there? And his classes would be more attentive and, and they do better in school and stuff. Um, so this question might be a little bit off topic, but... Um, when it comes to praying in atmospheres and stuff, is, is that something that you guys pray for in your, in your households or where you yeah, have your quiet times? Yeah, actually or? very, very much. Um, cool. And I, I do that, I do it specifically when I go, I, I travel quite a bit. So if I'm in a hotel room or someone's house, you know, the Bible says when you enter a place, let your peace come upon it or say peace, peace to this house. And there's actually a spiritual thing that's happening there. You are actually releasing I, 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 in faith, I release the peace of God that's in me into the atmosphere so that I'm not going to sleep and, and have all sorts of bad dreams, you know. I, I deliberately take the atmosphere with us. You know, it's like that old Johnny Farnham song, everywhere, or whatever song it was, everywhere you go, you always take the weather. But, you know, <laughs> I think it's... Everywhere you go. Um, but I think it's so important that we actually are aware that we're called to change the atmosphere around us, that we actually, when I walk into a room, I, I like to remind myself before I walk in who I am and what I'm carrying so that when I walk in, I'm not going to be affected by everybody's opinions and, and stuff around me. I'm actually going to affect them. I'm going to impact them because I know who I am, that Christ is in me. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Therefore, by faith, the way I do that is I I begin to build expectation. What's it going to look like when Jesus just walks into this room? Um. So Jesus in me is about to walk in. The next person I meet, how are they going to be impacted when I say hello? If I really believe it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And how's that going to impact them? So I think that's so important. And to be aware of our... uh, our authority, you have the capacity uh, 
not to be a thermometer, but to be a thermostat, one that actually changes the atmosphere when you come in. So I yeah. think that that's something to be really, really well aware of. It's a, it's a good question. You can build it as well. Like I've built it, you know, like built the presence, you know, like building and building and, you know, like praying all the time. You know, you put worship on, clean the house or clean your car and, and get to a place where, where the, the atmosphere is there and people will remark on it. You know, I've gotten mm. to a place in my car where people get in the car and they're like, wow, it feels like great in here, you know, like. Or like, if you pray, or you know, they ask these kind of questions, because they don't know what's yeah. going on, but they're feeling something yeah. that they only felt when they've stepped across your threshold. Yeah. So I think that's like, fun, you know? Yeah. I was just talking to uh, Rachel Jones, actually, this week. It's, I don't know if Rachel's here. But she has 90 minutes uh, with, um, she does uh, sports psychology. And I was just um, encouraging her just to be intentional with 90, 90 minutes, even though, you know, you're talking about uh, different things. Uh, that to actually be conscious that you're releasing the presence of God in that yeah. room, and by the end of it, I mean, you know, we're expecting some pretty major, uh, major miracles. You know, in the Argentinian revival, uh, there was there was so much prayer and worship that was going over a, a geographical area. I believe in in geographical anointings, uh, where I think there was the border was there was a street where the actual border uh, bordered Argentina and, and another nation. And uh, people would go and witness to people on one side of the street, and they would get totally knocked back, totally rejected. They would cross the street to the other side, and then somebody else would approach them, and they would fall to their knees in tears and saying, Show, uh, tell me everything that, that you know. So I, I do believe that there's an intentionality in it, as Pastor Catherine said, um, that there, you know, uh, we're, not, we're not just a thermometer, we're a, th we're a, th we're a thermostat. It's like what uh, Reinhard Bonnke said when he was flying over in an area, all the pastors says, you know, you know Pastor, you know, Reinhard Bonnke, do you feel the, 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 the demonic, the darkness over the air? And he says, I feel nothing but the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> That's so wonderful. And, and I think even using the, the, your imagination, we do this every single week on, uh, at, at Plunkett Park, is that we're, where we're worshiping, that I believe that there's a warfare in worship, that it's not just we're just trying to battle these things, uh, you know, things of the darkness, but when you shine your light, you actually, we begin to see it over the houses. We're, we're seeing it so clear. It's like we're seeing these houses getting saturated with the presence mm. of God, that there's a momentum that's building in the spirit, that I'm not, uh, I'm not, a, uh, I'm not a, a pump. I'm a, I'm a tap. I'm a gate to heaven. And so as I begin to renew my mind, that, that heaven begins to flow through me. Peter walked past people, and his, just his very shadow was cast on them, and they were touched by the presence of God. The Azusa Street Revival, two kilometer radius people would begin to fall into the power of god at a at a at a station and so i i, I believe in it big time i think it was we, if we can see it we can build it in the spirit you can have it in the yeah. natural i mean maria would with edda she'd go into a town and actually 20 mile radius they'd start to um fall down in the fields and have encounters with god so why not hallelujah was that helpful to you Hallelujah. All right, what we're going to do is actually, I'm going to get these guys to come on up, and we're going we're to pray for some people right now. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Lord. And I just pray that, that all that's been discussed tonight, all that's been talked about, Lord, that would bear fruit in our lives, Lord God, that you would help us, Father, to walk and talk with you, to, to engage with you, God, to really learn what it is uh, to, to have relationship with you and to prioritize you as our first love, Lord God. I ask for help. Holy Spirit, help us, Lord, to love you well. Help us, Lord, to worship you. Amen. Hallelujah. I realize I haven't said hello uh, to, to uh, our missionaries home from Cambodia. Hi, guys. Good to see you. And, uh, and it's wonderful to have um, Ryan here. I know you, you, you and uh, Louisa. It's just so good to have you here tonight. But we're just going to quickly pray for a few people before we go. I realize it's getting late, and I appreciate you coming out in the cold. And we're just going to prophesy and pray for, us, uh, for those that need healing tonight. But before we do that, I just want to ask you, if you're here tonight and you know in your heart you don't have a relationship with God, you know, it's one thing to believe that God exists, but it's another thing to actually respond to Him and say, Lord, I want to come into relationship with You. I want to have, I want to receive Your mercy. You know, the Bible says that Christ gave His life to pay for the sins of the whole world. But it requires us actually acknowledging I need forgiveness 
in order to receive it. It requires us to respond to His mercy, to say, Lord, I need a Savior. I want to have relationship with You. I need forgiveness. That as we respond to His invitation to receive life, to receive wholeness, to receive forgiveness, to receive mercy, it's in that place where we actually respond and say, yes, Lord, I need a Savior. I need forgiveness that salvation comes to us. Hallelujah. As we begin to open our hearts and say, yes, Lord, come into my life. I want to have relationship with you. That's the place where we, the Bible talks about us being born again, where actually the Spirit of God comes into us and we become new on the inside, where He, act, he changes our very nature and gives us the nature of Christ. And uh, tonight, I just want to ask, before we go ahead and pray for people, if you're sitting here tonight and you know in your heart you're away from God, but you want to respond to His mercy and say, yes, Lord, I want to receive you as Lord. I want you to come into my life. I want to receive your forgiveness and I want to come into relationship with you. I want to pray for you before we pray for anybody else. If that's you tonight and you say, yes, I want to respond to the mercy of God, just wave your hand at me and I'll see it and I'll, we'll, we'll pray for you. Is there anybody here tonight that says, yes, that's me? I want to respond to God's mercy. I want to receive Him as Savior tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Okay, well, we're just going to pray for a few people before we, before we close tonight. Father, I thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace here, Lord. You are so good. God, you are so good. Caitlin, can I pray for you, please? Yes. He hallelujah. loves Caitlin. Isn't he just so awesome? Yes, you, hallelujah. Caitlin. You're a gift to us. Thank you, Jesus, for your precious son, Caleb. I just heard him say, Caleb, you're my, my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And I saw him putting a, a crown of glory on your head tonight, Caleb. I heard him say, I am taking you from glory to glory. And I saw a massive harvest field. And I just saw like just that the field was ripe. And that was, it was so, and you went out to harvest the grain. And it was so easy. It was just like, it was a delight and a joy. And in your walk, you were, it was just like, come on, let's pick some grain. And, and it was such a joy and a freedom. And I feel like God is saying that there is, it's, that it is time, the field is ripe for the harvest for you. And I even see that there are fields where you have not planted that you are going to reap. That you are going to reap. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, because you built my presence because you've made me your first love, because you've kept me the priority, I am going to come. I'm going to meet you in a massive way, and you're going to experience a powerful move of the Holy Spirit. And I just saw like, like homes filled with boys, you just bringing them all in, bringing them all in. And I saw you, Papa Kalen, and I saw like your arms extending, almost like dislocating, so you could reach out and touch more, more and bring more in and invite them all to come. And even as you're harvesting, just droves of people behind you, just falling in and just doing it together. And I just see you have this heart that champions people, but you invite them on your team and you say, come on, let's do it together. And the Father loves that about you. And just as He invited you to join His team, I see you saying, come on, guys, let's do it together. So we just bless that in Kaylin, in Jesus' name. And we just say, every heart's desire be met. Yeah, every heart, every thought. I just hear him saying, your every desire of your heart is going to be met in Jesus' name. Promises fulfilled. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Can I pray for you, sir? Yes, you, sir. Yeah. Next one over. Uh, next one. Next one over. Yes, you, sir. Yeah. Can I pray for you? Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord just um, really pointed you out to me when I was standing there and showed me um, what looked like bricks that had been laid in a pattern. And between the edges of the bricks were uh, pieces of um, uh, charcoal or, or, or things where things had been burnt before. And, and I was looking at this and asking, Lord, what... What is it that you're showing me for this man? And the Lord's saying that you have established a foundation of wisdom in your life. 
and it has been as much about stability as it has been about uh, um, keeping down the things that have burnt you. And what the Lord is saying in that is that like so many of us, there have been things that have hurt us, but you've learned to take the foundational truths of the Word of God and solidify them on in a, in a pattern that has created a way that you do life. And there is a wisdom that comes out of that that the Lord is asking you to release and share for other people. And He says, do not neglect the power of your testimony, even in the things that aren't so easy to speak about. There are people that need to hear what you have to say so that they can start building their own solid path as well. Bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'd just like to pray for the lady here with the blue scarf and the gray jumper. Yes, ma'am. Can I pray for you? Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Papa. <laughs> come, come. <laughs> Hallelujah. What's your name? Vicky. Hello, Vicky. Father, I thank you for Vicky. Vicky, the Lord loves your childlike heart. That you are you are one that it's like when push comes to shove, you know that if you just go and call up, call up to God, He's going to put His arms around you and He will take care of you. And the Lord's seen that, that uh, solid, uh, solid faith. And you've not felt like you've been full of faith, but the Lord looks at you and He sees at your very core is that you know you are a daughter. You know that you are loved by God. And the Lord says that He will take care of you. When others have forsaken you, the Lord, I, the Lord, will take care of you, says the Lord. And I see that there's been, uh, it's, it's been like wolves that have tried to, to bite at you. It's been like uh, reports and things that have tried to come uh, to discourage you and to try to intimidate you. But the Lord says, because you have sought me, because you have looked to me as your help, He says, I I'm going to show myself strong on your behalf. And he says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. He says, whoa, Shaka, his grace is upon you. And the Lord says, by his stripes, whoa, you've been healed. But the Lord says, show, he who is for you, <laughs> he is roaring over you. And the Lord says, he's going to show himself strong on your behalf. So Father, I thank you that out of her belly will flow rivers of living water. And we say, yes, Lord, you are her strong salvation, her strong protector in the name of Jesus. Amen. On the uh, conversation of intimacy and hearing God, I just failed to put out an invitation. Uh, I think it could be at least three of you who, uh, you know, we, we, I think we can readily accept the forgiveness of God. I think sometimes we've done things and we battle to forgive ourselves. I know I've had that myself for six months where I just, just, just a niggling thing here. I just uh, battled to really forgive myself for something that I had done. And if there's anybody that you register with that, you feel that that might be yourself, I'd love you just to come up and we can pray. Don't even have to know what it is or discuss it. I just wanted to stand with you and walk through that. If there's anybody Maybe here that witnesses with that, just come up here and we'll come pray over for here, you. Gareth. Maybe bring them over here. And, and On the side, yeah? Yes, Gareth. come over here. Yeah. Uh, if you feel embarrassed, and you can Thank pop on afterwards as well. Having trouble forgiving yourself, come and see Gareth right now. If you had, there's something Thank that you, you haven't been... Papa. Just come right now. Thank you, Lord. I feel somebody's had something on this Wednesday. Uh, recently, you had something happen or you got some news and Wednesday was like rough. Who's that person? I'm not talking about every day recently has been rough, but I'm talking about on Wednesday, mate, it was rough. Who was that? Who's that person? Can you just come? Can I pray for you? Is that okay? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can I pray for you? Tegan? Yeah, would you come please? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for precious Tegan. 
Tegan, I just saw you like a lightning conductor, like a lightning rod. And I see that God is attracted to your hunger. God is attracted to the glory that you're, I sense that there is a measure of glory that you're already carrying. And it's like you stuck out your rod and you're saying, yeah, God, more of your glory. And God's saying, get ready, Tegan, because I am about to visit you in a significant way. And you're gonna know and experience and encounter the glory of God. And you're being changed and transformed, even from the inside out. And I sense it's like you, you don't even recognize yourself anymore. And I see like a holy boldness coming over you. And I sense in the past that you've wanted to be a witness and, you've, and fear has come against you. And I see like all that gone in Jesus' name. And as you experience and encounter His glory in a greater levels, that you're going to not be able to stop yourself. And I even feel like people are going to be like, is that Tegan? Is that really Tegan? But there's this, I feel like there's this roar that is ready to come out of you. And I feel like Tegan's saying, God is saying, Tegan, release the roar. Release the roar. The time is now. The time is now. And I just see you so scented in glory. And it's like, you're just going to minister love out of the glory, out of the glory. The more you put out, the more you get in. So we just thank you for that, God. And we bless that in her. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. I will prophesy the, over you, sir. Will you come forward? Yes, you this time, sir. Yes, come forward. Yeah. Sure, <laughs> Oh. What's your name? Lord, I just saw that uh, picture of um, a barrel, and there was it wasn't you, but someone was putting fresh vegetables into an, a barrel of old vegetables. And I saw you standing by and looking at that and saying, Oh, that's wasteful. There, there's still some life in that. And, um, and uh, there's still uh, some purpose in that. I feel like the Lord is saying, Eric, there is life in you. There is purpose in you. And you know it. And He's calling it out of you. He's calling it out of you for His glory. And He says, don't stop. Don't stop. Just keep going. Just keep going, but seek more. Seek more because you are in a period of His favor. You are going to find that even the things that were difficult before have become easier as you rest in Him. He will cause uh, even uh, life where there has previously whoa, been death. And I, see, I can feel the healing in your hands. And I can feel a, a greater uh, a release of the healing anointing upon you. And this is where you're going to find life coming out of dead things. Hallelujah. I believe that you are what well, well, God is calling you, a cancer chaser. You are a man who can chase by the power of God and faith in the Word. You can chase cancer out of a body. And I, uh, I just am um, amazed. I can see it right now. Uh, literally, you chasing cancer out of bodies. And the Lord's saying, be bold, Eric, and go and get those things for my glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, we just say thank you, Holy yeah. Spirit, for your grace on his body. I thank you, Holy Ghost, Lord, that you come right now. And I command diabetes has to go in Jesus' name. <laughs> I release life and health, Lord, to his body, to his pancreas, to the blood. In the name of Jesus, we speak wholeness. Lord, we speak healing to his eye, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Lord. <laughs> thank you for your healing. Thank you for your touch. There's somebody here tonight. You need healing for blood pressure issues. I declare in Jesus' name. <laughs> healing comes in the name of the Lord. I thank you for wholeness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ryan, can I pray for you? Yeah. A wonderful visitor. Thank you for coming. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for Ryan. I, I know people joke about um, Radelaide, and I felt like God saying it's not a coincidence that your name begins with R. And um, Adelaide is going to start looking a lot like you. I heard him say, and I heard him say that um, the dream of your heart, and, and you've been carrying his dreams, the dream of God for Adelaide. And I just see like God is saying that he's going to bring it forth. 
He's going to bring it to pass. And I see like there's a tenacity in you that says, God, this is the way it's going to be. And this is what I stand for. And I see you have won that you have said to the enemy this far and no further. And you've taken a stand for righteousness. And I feel like God is saying, look, even as you have stood and continue to stand, He is about to do breakthrough for you. And I just see like even now, God just releasing tonight over you, like the captain of the host of heaven, the angels just being released into Adelaide tonight, released over all you put your hand to. And I just see a mighty, 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 um, a mighty force being released, but it's producing a great harvest. And everything that you have stand for, Ryan Radelaide, everything that you have stood for, the heart of Adelaide, I see it's like you've stood for their hearts. And God's saying, I am giving you the heart of the city. Ryan, it is your, I see him saying, I'm giving you Adelaide. The heart of the city belongs to you. So I just thank you, God, for this mighty man of valor, this strong one, this brave one. I see just like him giving you your like stripes tonight and calling you mighty man of valor, captain in the army. And we just bless him tonight in Jesus' name. I thank you for your patience tonight. It's gone a little longer tonight, but I'm going to invite some of our um, ministry team up, uh, interns, pastors, leaders, and we're going to pray. If you need prayer for healing, if you'd just like some prayer, I'd love you to to come and take some time. We'll we'll pray for you. Um, If I can ask Nick if you can come and, and, uh, and all of our interns, if you can come, come and help me. Uh, Come on up and we're going to just open the altar right now. If you'd like prayer for healing, we'd like to pray for you. But I want to encourage you, come on out Sunday. It's going to be glorious. Have we got uh, Glory City Youth tomorrow night? It's uh, going to be here 7 o'clock. Be wonderful with Pastor Chris. So, Father, I thank you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We pray the blessing of God on you. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday. God bless you.